Hello everybody, this is Dago Seda bringing you another walkthrough. This one, if you were paying attention and watched my last walkthrough, you would have already known that this is going to be our next walkthrough. Uh, it's Code Veronica X, and for, for everyone's information, I'm playing the HD version on the 360. So, the only real differences are aesthetic, and I think it doesn't even map the... Uh, excuse me, the visual differences don't even mean anything if you're... If you're not playing with an HDMI cable anyway, which I have done that before, and I'd say it looks really fantastic. All right, so this in this game you play as Claire and Chris. First part of the game is Claire. The second part of the game is Chris. And basically, um, right now, what all we're really doing is just kind of escaping from where we are. The plot thus far is. Claire has been captured, and then that really nice guy in the prison who's a terrible guard, who both me and Narb consider him to be Billy D. Williams. Well, actually, Narb, and I just kind of like, yeah, you're right. Anyway, so they, these are like the first enemies in the game, and they're actually pretty hard to actually dodge without getting hurt. So don't worry too much about the whole taking damage thing here. Another thing I like to point about this game is... This game is actually incredibly easy. I don't care what anyone says. And uh, you have a crap ton of health. Like, you can get bit like eight or nine times. That might be a bit of an exaggeration. But you can get bit bitten a lot before you're even brought into uh, danger. So, like, I think I took like three or four bites and I was still in fine. And plus, also, what this game does is if you shake off the zombie fast enough, you actually won't even take damage. So that's a pretty good thing. Alright, so what we're doing here is we're gonna, we have to go pick up this uh, weapon that we're going to need later. And during my first playthrough of the game, I actually completely forgot about picking up this weapon. So I highly recommend you go and do it. And I, had, I made a lot of stupid, like, going through the wrong door mistakes in this walkthrough. I'll point that out now. I mean, right there wasn't one of them, but just be warned. And by a lot, I mean almost none of them here, and like three or four in Chris's parts. But whatever. Anyway, one thing I should like to point out: um, when you got the handgun, there's a little cut cutscene where um, you you meet Steve, and then you like shoot at him because he's trying to kill you or something because he thinks you're a bad guy or something like that. And so you take a couple shots at him with the handgun. And the game actually it gives you the handgun with three shots missing in it. So the full the full handgun clip is uh, 15, by the way, because if you noticed, every time you pick up a handgun box, it has 15 shots in it. So it's not like friggin' Resident Evil 3, I think. Yeah, I feel like Resident Evil 3 gave you like boxes of 30, and I'm like, come on, really? Yeah, one of the complaints a lot of people have had about this game is like. Oh my god, it's way too hard. I always run out of ammo. There's not enough ammo to kill every single enemy in the game. That is a load of crap. Alright? You'll see by the end of the game how much ammo I have left over. And you'll also realize that I did kill um, 80 to 90% of the enemies I find. So, yeah. <laughs> really, this game isn't hard. I don't know why anyone complains about it. And also, this seems like be like the one Resident Evil that a lot of people don't like, for pretty much no reason. Like, basically, all the only com like legitimate complaints I've actually read about this game, in like re I, I like re re reading reviews of games I like on Game Facts, and one of the complaints I read is always end up being this game is too hard. I run out of ammo. Oh my god! You get to this point in the game, you realize you don't have enough ammo, and you have to start the whole thing over. Bull crap! That's just because you suck, all right? I mean, yeah, technically in any Resident Evil game, if you you're stupid and use all of your ammo, then yeah, of course you're gonna get stuck and have to start over. But no one should be stupid enough to do that. And uh, I don't know. Anyway, so what we're doing there is a little metal detector. You have to put your metal things in there, otherwise the the shutters will close and the blah 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 blah. You know. Okay, there's a uh, Steve again. He's kind of your friend now, I guess. And here's the reason we came in here, right? To get that hawk emblem. And also, uh, hit... <coughs> Excuse me. 
Remember to hit that, otherwise you're going to waste your time and have to run all the way back there like I did in one of my earlier runs of this. Um, actually, it's more like one of my practice recording sessions, really. So, what you should do with the Hawk Emblem is just kind of put it in here, because what we have to do is make the Hawk Emblem, but sort of like make a fake one so we can get it through the metal detector, which you'll see in a minute why, or uh, how. Anyway, yeah, so one thing this game does, which uh, I'm sorry you're not going to actually see by watching this walkthrough, but this game is kind of heavy on the plot side, for that matter, because what it does is it has a lot of, it kind of has a lot of cutscenes, actually. So, like, e even for uh, a Resident Evil game, they usually don't have that many cutscenes, but this game kind of has a lot of them. The cutscenes at the end of the game are really sweet. And this game, one of the first games that actually bothers telling any sort of plot through a cutscene. Usually it's just in interactions with um, the Ashfords, which I'll, I'll talk about later when I actually have to. And, you know, like, cutscenes I skip, I'll try to describe what happens in them. But, yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff actually happens in the cutscenes that lets you, like, know what's going on. And then, the logbooks, it seems like they actually add some insight to it, as opposed to just... Um, being logbooks and telling the whole plot. Like, you actually gain something from watching cutscenes instead of saying, oh, look, action. You know, but o overall, this, um, Co Code Veronica X seems to focus less on the survival horror part of Resident Evil and more on the just general gameplay-wise. I mean, the gameplay in this game is solid, and I also like the fact that both Claire and Chris can have the a 10 item inventory you know, you know the basically the gameplay in this is just a, a solid version of the formula they've been developing over the years and they've also like improved the graphics tenfold and this is just like commenting on like the standard game because what, what they did they finally um had the technology where they can have fully rendered backgrounds as opposed to um like, not fully rendered, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, like, full full backgrounds and stuff where they can... The background moves with you and it's not just uh, pre-rendered graphics like they've been doing in the, the early Resident Evil games. So, I, I have to give... The, they really outdone themselves with the whole presentation of this game. A lot of the cut... As I said, a lot of the cutscenes are really good. And all the environments look really nice. And also... This game has a really interesting thing they do with puzzles, where th they'll make you have an item, and then you'll... It, usually what Resident Evil does, you'll use up an item, and then it'll say, oh, you don't need this item anymore. You know, okay, so you'll drop it. In th this game, a lot of the items, you'll use it, and then you'll think, okay, I don't need this anymore. And then you're like, wait, why didn't, why didn't it prompt me to drop it? So then, you'll, this game actually forces you to focus to the point where you you have to think, okay, I have this item, I have this item, okay, and then you get to, get to some somewhere later in the game where you actually have to use the item, and you'll think, oh crap, oh what do I put here? And it's like think, think back, think back. What what items do I still have? And you go, oh, yeah, a lot. Plus this game, a lot of the um, puzzles, even though this game isn't exactly really puzzly. But a lot of the stuff you have to figure out, or like what goes where stuff, it's not, it's not really obscure. But at the same time, it's not handed to you on a silver platter. Like, I don't know, kind of, kind of like the the newer Resident Evils where you just get the get the item and then it's really straightforward. It's like, okay, I need a key. Go get this key. All right, I can go to the store now. Or maybe that wasn't the best example. But anyway, just all right, watch, watch out for those guys because you are going to just remember that you're going to have to deal with them later when you come back because we are going to come back to the prison place later. Please okay, anyway, so that thing we just picked up in the Dara Mulan or briefcase or whatever, I, I forget what it was called. Um, it's just like, if you read the document that was attached to it, basically it's this um, special alloy that is metal detector safe like it, go, it can go through a metal detector without picking up anything so basically what we had to do is in that the one really big room the room where we picked up the handgun well, I don't know if I would call it a room but 
And there's a door we have to go through that requires using the eagle, or hawk emblem, excuse me. And basically what we have to do is get this through the metal detector and then take it through. I thought this metal detector thing was pretty ingenious, actually. It, like the very first, yeah. The very first time I played through this game, I, th I was like, wow, holy crap, what what's going on here? It's metal detector stuff? And it actually confused, for some, maybe I was just being stupid, but the metal detector is a, was kind of a clever thing, actually. And here it forces you to, de to run past zombies, because it's sort of like the game training you for something that you should know how to do already, because this game is pro- like, if I was going to say, hey, you should start getting into Resident Evil, if- if I wasn't recommending the first one, I'd definitely recommend this one. Like, I'd say, yeah, play the first one so you, like, understand everything that's going on, and, you know. But then again, the first one is also very unforgiving. And yeah, when I say the first one, I don't mean, oh, yeah, go go and play the original, like, director's cut, the one, the PSX and stuff. Because I, I can give a rant on the original one um, in another video, but... Yeah, I've actually never gotten hit by one of these zombies ever until now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'd say either play the remake of the original, which gets you the full experience, and even even to a mod to a modern gamer, the they should find the graphics to be really good. Cause a lot of modern gamers are stupid. And they're like, oh my god, graphics make the game blah 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 blah. Yeah. So if you want decent, good, decent to good graphics, play the remake of the first game. Or this, or Code Veronica X. Code Veronica X is pretty for, forgiving to beginners. Because like I said, they give you a crap ton of ammo. And really, you will have enough ammo to fight every every single, if not almost every single enemy in the game. So the, on, the only possible way you can run out of ammo is if you deliberately go firing off your gun at nothing. And then waste entire clips of ammo that way. But really, it's not... Not that hard, guys, alright? Just, basically, this game will teach you, this game is forgiving enough that you have a lot of health, so you'll say, oh, I got hit, and then, eventually, you'll, as the game goes on, you'll, because of this, um, extended health bar, you'll, you can survive longer without dying, so that'll give you more time to actively learn how to dodge stuff before dying, you know what I mean? Like, in the first Resident Evil game, I died pretty quickly, even when I was playing as Chris, because they don't give you that much health in that game. That game is not forgiving at all. Alright? Okay. Anyway, so yeah, beginners for Resident Evil play either Code Veronica X or the remake of the first game, if you're daring enough. But that shiny thing back there, we're going to pick it up later, and you'll see why. Alright guys, I will see you next time.